is good. Beer is good. Beer is good. And stop. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode four of the Beer Chasers. So this episode is going to feature some content from a trip to Tampa that John and I took a couple weeks back in search of the Guar beer. So a little bit about the beer. The beer was brewed to commemorate the uh, fourth annual barbecue event on August 17th, which is probably already passed by the time you're going to see this. But it was brewed by a local Florida brewer, Rob Chalmers, in collaboration with Cigar City Brewery. So John and I went to the brewery to take a tour. Let's go ahead and check out some footage. We have a very special tour today. We have Guar in the house. Woo! Special efforts to Rob Chalmers, who uh, created the recipe for Guar beer. And uh, for those of you who remember, Peachfish IPA, uh, and Death Piggy IPA, and a few others that Chalmers has created. Uh, Cigar City has done a collaboration with Guar for barbecue. Very excited. The release is today at Pro Bar. What time is that at, Rob? Six o'clock. Six o'clock. So we're all looking forward to that. All right, on to the tour. If there's any questions, ask me questions. I'm going to take you around the brewery here, show you how we make the, the beer, tell you the history of Cigar City, and uh, share a little bit of beer with you. We uh, started right here in March of 2009. We started with two employees, Joey Redner, the owner. He went out and got Wayne Wombles, our head brewer. Within six months of opening the brewery, we went to the Great American Beer Festival and we won gold medal for our Humidor High Line, our IPA flavored with wood. This is the wood we use to make the High Line Humidor series. It is red Spanish cedar. It smells like a cigar box. It is what they used to make cigar boxes and humidors. We put spirals about this big in for every five gallons of beer, so about 90 spirals floating around in a 15 barrel fermenter for about seven days after secondary fermentation. We went back to the Great American Beer Festival the next year and won silver for the same beer for the same category. The next year we went back and won gold for the Minaret ESB, Extra Special Bitter. We also went back last year and won bronze for our Cucumber Saison. We got robbed on that one. It's one of the best beers we make in my opinion. It got top 25 beers in the country. We uh, should have won gold medal, but it was October in Denver. And it was put in a category called Field Beers and Pumpkin Beers. So how do you give a cucumber beer the gold medal in a pumpkin beer category? <laughs> they just aren't going to do it no matter how good the beer is. So, uh, again, we make a lot of beer, but our big problem is we cannot make enough beer. Supply does not meet demand. We brew around the clock six days a week, 24 hours a day. We have three shift brewers, a morning brewer, an afternoon brewer, and an overnight brewer. We have our original brew house right back here, the 15 barrel brew house. We've opened up a 30 barrel brew house down at the end of the property to help alleviate the distribution and the production needs. The tank farm down there dwarfs the one up here. We have 10 tanks left up here. The fermenters down there are massive. We have just gotten a shipload of 120 barrel fermenters. We already had four down there. Then we just got four more. We just got four more. We're getting three more on Monday. Three more on Monday. I heard we're getting a 240 barrel fermenter, but I don't know. Right. Right time? Uh, all right. All right, so uh, we're expanding that way. We've opened up the brew pub on Northdale Mabry. Uh, if you guys want to try some fantastic food with great beers, Tim, our ex-morning brewer, is up there running the beer operations for us up there. Fantastic uh, brew house. We have the brew house on Northdale Mabry. Uh, we also have the one in the airport, Flightside Southwestern Airline, for food and drink. And there's other plans talking about expanding over here with a beer garden down at the end of the property, some other things in the works. We bought a canning line from New Belgian Brewing Company, so we're doing cans mostly now. Cans are fantastic in Florida. Not only does the beer taste better in cans, it lasts longer, it has a longer shelf life, there's no oxidation, no seepage, no uh, light strike, number one detriment to beer. Why does it taste better in cans? No light strike, no oxidation, no seepage. Uh, again, uh, with a bottle of beer, you have the tendency to get light strike, no matter how opaque the bottle is. Uh, there is more oxygen in the bottle than there is in the can. So. Uh, the cans in Florida are also fantastic for the beach, the boat, the pool, the golf course, tailgating, shotgunning the high line. <laughs> so again, we were very happy about the cans. The cans we're doing right now are the high line, the Maduro, the Hotter Than Hellas, and the Florida Cracker. We're coming out with new cans. We're going to be doing the high line humidor. We're going to be doing the white oak. We're going to be doing the invasion the Tokabaga and the Jose Martin can, so look for those soon. Uh, also, the Guar beer is in cans, so it tastes even better than it was in bottles. 
All right, Joey Render was born here in Tampa. He named the brewery Cigar City after Tampa's nickname. Tampa got the nickname Cigar City because it is the cigar distributor for the world. Tampa, Tampa, Gusta Ray, many other fine cigars made right here in Tampa. We also have a fellow in-house rolling cigars every Saturday. So if you like cigars, when you get here, you owe yourself the price. So is it here yet? It's already here. That's the guys I've had, and I don't even smoke. So. <laughs> All right, so uh, uh, Joey names the beers after things related to Tampa, if possible. Highlight, we had a Highlight Fronton two miles down the road when we opened up. Six months after we opened, it closed, but we kept the name. The Maduro is a shout out to the cigar makers down in Ybor City. The Hotter Than Hellas is a Hellas style lager. It's hotter than hell in here, so it's a play on words. The uh, Florida Cracker is a shout out to the cattle farmers from the Early days in Florida, they used laugh whips instead of lassos. They got known as audible herders, Florida crackers. Um, Coca Baga is a local Indian tribe. Many other names of beers related here to Florida. If you have questions about them, ask me. Otherwise, I'll be here all day naming the beers. And I think we want to get into the back end of the brewery and see how we make the beer. So we make beer with four main ingredients water, hops, yeast, and grain. The grain we use is mostly barley. Uh, malted barley. Uh, we've used well over 100 different kinds of grains since we've opened up. Everything from everything from black patent malt to dark chocolate malt to caramel malt to crystal malt to rolled oats to flaked oats to two row pale. Two row pale is our base malt. We use it in every beer. This is the hops we are using. These are old. Normally they're green. The hops are compacted. They're not cone hops. We do use some cone hops, but mostly it is compact. Hops. Better for recipe use and shelf life consistency. We can fit more into the brew kettle than we can the cone hop, so we can get you a hoppier beer. I'm going to pass around some grain. This is uh, Munich malt. Very tasty. It's a good breakfast malt. Tastes like grape nuts. If you're allergic to grain, if you have gluten intolerance, okay. or if you have celiac disease, what the hell are you doing in a brewery? But if you do, there's a bathroom right there. <laughs> So as you're chewing it up, there's, there's a husk on it, there's a protective husk. We crack the husk in the grist mill in this little room right here. Also, as you chew it, the longer you chew it, the sweeter it's going to get. The enzymes in your mouth are breaking down the complex carbohydrates, turning it into simple sugars. Simple process, pretty much the same as how we get the sweetness and the sugars out of the grain. The grain gets cracked in the grist mill, comes up over the brewery in this white tube, into the mash tub. The cracked grain then gets hit with hot water. The water strike is 155 degrees. The brewer mashes it in with the brew paddle up here for about an hour. Basically, he's extracting those sugars from the grain itself. As you chew the grain, you taste it, it got sweeter and sweeter. That's what we're looking for, the sugars. It creates a product called wort, W-O-R-T. We drop that wort down into the hot liquor tank. Then we spray the grain down again to get the residual sugars off. That's called sparging. We take the sparge water, put that into the hot liquor tank. We bring the mixture over to the brew kettle. We start the boil. The boil goes for an hour and a half. All during the boil, we add the hops. The spent grain goes into blue buckets like that one over there. The blue buckets get put outside, and the cattle farmers come and take them away, feed their cattle. They get free feed, we get free disposal, everybody is happy. Then we cool it down, we aerate it, and bring the mixture over to the fermenters. The fermenters are the conical-shaped vessels. They have the yeast waiting in there. The yeast will eat the sugars, creating more yeast, creating carbon dioxide, and after fermentation, creating alcohol. On average, grain to glass on a Maduro is 11 days, or at highlight, it's 13 to 15 days. Once we get the alcohol to the level we want it to be, or we told the government that the ABV would be, we crash cool it to get the yeast to stop fermenting. That's why, well, this beer is completely done, that's why it's warm. We might get to try a colder beer in the back, which is crash cool. What method do you use crash cool? We use liquid glycol. If you look at the fermenters, there's a dome up top, then a bump out. The bump out is a jacket. In between the jacket and the fermenter, we pump liquid glycol, and we can control the temperature of every ferment. So if you're doing an ale or lager or saison, you can ferment at different temperatures, and then when you crash cool, you can bring them down to 33 degrees. Once that happens, we crash cool it, the yeast goes down to the bottom of the tank. We can then put uh, diatomaceous earth on there, biofine if we need to, to grab the remaining yeast. Brings them down below the tap line, at which point we bring the beer from the bright the fermenters to the bright tanks in the back via these hoses. Once we get the beer to the bright tanks, that's where we do the finishing and we do the carbonation. We carbonate with CO2 or nitrogen. Once we get the beers carbonated, we force carbonate, we do not bottle condition anymore. Once the beers are carbonated, we'll bottle them and keg them and leave the rest up to you guys. And you're doing a damn good job. So. <laughs> Once the tour is complete, 
The group headed next door to the Cigar City Tasting Room. The Tasting Room at Cigar City features many of the Cigar City brews on tap for your tasting pleasure. The Tasting Room is open from 11 to 11, Sunday through Thursday, and 11 to 1, Friday and Saturday. But enough about that, it's time to drink some Guar beer. tasting were complete, John and I headed down to Ybor City for some lunch, where we also got a chance to speak with Rob Chalmers, the creator of the Guar Beer. Let's check it out. Uh, Beer Chasers here with Rob Chalmers, who is the creative genius behind the Guar Beer. Rob, how's it going? Great, man. Great, guys. Cool. Yeah, so, uh, can you tell us exactly how you got involved with Guar and ended up getting to uh, brew the Guar Beer for him? Yeah, I uh, sent them a message on Facebook about a little over three years ago and asked them uh, if I could make a beer for them. And they were like, yeah, sure. You know, Dave Brock, you order said, sure. So I uh, bottled up some, sent him a six pack. He loved it, you know, he wanted more. <laughs> yeah, so it sounds like it's been like a three year process. So you've been kind of perfecting the recipe a little bit, kind of going back and forth with some of it, or? Uh, yeah, the Death Piggy Pale Ale, that's the original one I made. And then uh, he uh, asked me shortly after for some more beer, you know. Previous to that, we hung out backstage, and, you know, drank some of the beer and everything. And uh, currently, your brew setup is more of a traditional homebrew setup, where you are brewing a smaller batches, which is why you hooked up with Cigar City to produce the volume of bar beer you need for the event. Now that you've seen some of the success and demand for this beer, are you planning to expand your operations? 
Yes, yes. Uh, we, we have some plans in the next uh, probably year and a half. I'll uh, elaborate more later. Uh, can't say much right now, but definitely plans for a brewery very soon. Cool. So uh, both John and I are home brewers. How long have you been kind of home brewing? How'd you get started? Um, I started back 2010. Previous to that, uh, my mentor is uh, Bob Sylvester from St. Somewhere Brewing Company. Hung out with him, you know, uh, brewed, bottled. He taught me a lot of stuff. And then from there, I bought a kit, you know, a little bit over $100 and decided, you know, I got to make this happen. Let's try it. Cool. So you're doing kind of like the five and ten gallon batches kind of a beer? Yeah, now I'm doing uh, ten gallons all grain. I started off, you know, with partial five gallons and now going up to uh, ten gallons and then just keep on going up, you know. Very cool. Is this, uh, any chance we're going to see this uh, Guar beer go into full production, or is it one and done, this is all the one time we're going to see it? I highly doubt it's a one and done. I believe uh, working hard on getting into full production in everybody's hands all around the United States. Yeah. Terrific. Cool, man. So uh, what does the future hold for Chalmers? You got anything kind of coming in the line that we talked about? Maybe you expand the brewery. You got anything else kind of going on we can talk about, or you said some stuff in the works, or...? Yes, just stuff in the works to get another brewery, or to, to get my brewery up and going. Um, but at another time, you know, we'll, we'll have some more details to follow. It's just sure. in the planning stages right now. I don't want to say too much. Okay. Well, um, seeing as we have some viewers in the Tampa Bay area, what are some of your go-to places for your, like, craft beer you love around here? Uh, Cigar City, obviously. St. Somewhere. Seventh Sun. Uh, Rap Brewing Company. Yeah, there, 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 there's quite a bit out there. There's a lot growing around here. There's a lot growing. Awesome. Cool. Well, in closing, is there anything you want to uh, tell the Beer Chaser audience? Anything you want to, want to say? Or? Drink Guar beer, man. Guar <laughs> beer. Go. All right, Rob. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Perfect. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank you. The final stop of the day had the Beer Chaser stopping at the Crow Bar in Ybor City for the Guar Beer Release event. Let's check it out. Crow Bar is located at 1812 North 17th Street in Ybor City, right between 7th and 8th Avenue. Tampa Metalheads are very much familiar with the Crow Bar location, as it has featured many metal acts throughout the years. And tonight was no exception, as they played host to the Guar Beer release party. The event featured metal bands, burgers, and of course, lots of Guar Beer. We even had the opportunity during the event to speak with Odorous Urungus, the lead singer of Guar. Let us welcome you to Tampa. Uh, with all the smut and crack cocaine here, you must feel at home. I love it here. What? So, uh, Molly was bullshit. We're going to celebrate the Guar beer tonight, and That's you've been so not. kind to allow some of the maggots and slaves of Tampa to get That's this year's brew. Well, both beer is usually made from malt, bar, hops, and water. But after seeing some of your life performances, anything special in that beer? I mean, I kind of pissed in it a little bit. It's 5.5, five, it's not 5 or 6. It's one in between. It's fucking, doesn't taste like shit. And also, of course, it's infected with AIDS and virulent SARS virus. So it's fucking really good. So drink it. I don't get anything out of it at all. So you toured all over the universe. I'm sure you've had a chance to sample many of the fine beverages on your travels. Other yes. than Guar Beer, what's your favorite beer, man? I like Guar Beer. Here it is right here. Anything else? No, only Guar. Oh, yes. Only Guar. Oh, okay. The blood from an infected Jewish dead baby. All right. So uh, Guar has a new album set to release in September. Is that correct? Yeah. Right, cool. Give us a little bit of chat about it. What's going on with it? Okay. Battle Maximus is our first album after the incredible leaving to the stars of the mostly aligned. What is Maximus? It is our 13th record with our new... No, it's not our 13th record with our new... Ah, whatever. It's Battle Maximus. It's our new fucking album. It's out September 17th and it's gonna fucking rule. Oh yeah, man. Well, thank you for so much of your precious time, Odorous. In closing, do you have any parting words for the Beer Chasers viewers? Yes, drink more beer until it's gone, and then make them make you some more. Hell yeah, man. Right. Thank you. Farewell. So that's going to do it for episode four of the Beer Chasers. Man, what an exciting weekend of beer chasing it was. We finally got a chance to try the Guar beer. 
Got a chance to tour the Cigar City Brewery, sat down with Rob Chalmers and talked brewing with him, met Odor Shirungas, listened to metal, drank lots of beer. Man, it doesn't get much better than that. So we're going to go ahead and roll on out of here. We do have a couple tracks from the band Guar Attacks, who performed live at the Guar Beer Release Party. So until next time, we'll see you later. This has been the band, Beer City, from Sold Out City, the song's called Salamanizer, Big of that band. Don't forget them.